come to my detoxification seminar, I will tell you the real science of how your body does it, about the phases of detoxification, and you will be upset that you've never been told before. That even doctors with credentials stood before you and did not give you the information you deserve to know about how the body does things such that you can really make appropriate decisions for life. How do we know that the diet that you think is good for everybody is not really good for everybody? Let's take, for example, the 80-10-10 diet. Raise your hand if anybody here practices 80-10-10. Nobody? I read the book. Hmm? I read the book. Okay, but you don't practice it. 80-10-10 means that you eat 80% carbs, 10% or less uh, fats, and 10% or less protein, in general. And most people who do the 80-10-10 are people who came from the natural hygiene movement. A lot of them will tell you how to avoid fats at all costs. No fats. And some of them overlap with the, some of the vegetarian doctors who are telling you to avoid all fats. Those vegan doctors, vegetarian doctors, will speak on, on stage, and I heard many of them because I sometimes speak with them in the same convention, in the same vegetarian festivals, and they speak to everybody and say, avoid fats, avoid oils. But then they allow you to eat very fatty foods at the same time. Something there is incongruent. They say one thing, but they don't necessarily practice, because it's almost impossible for people to have a low-fat diet, under 10%. If you live in the tropics, in the jungle, you can handle it. For reasons I cannot get into right now, it's too much physiology. But if you live in the city, and there's a lot of pollution, and most pollutants are fat-soluble, you must eat more fat to help dissolve those toxins and get them uh, diluted. You don't want to get toxins in without enough fat to dilute it. Your system wants to dilute them. Therefore, you hold on to the fat even more. So, I've seen a lot of people who went extremely low fat and after a few years, sometimes only a year, they started having all kind of problems. Fatigue, lack of energy, the skin lost its tone, they lose some, started losing their hair, started having problems with toxicity throughout their body. When I do the metabolic screening questionnaire that indicates many aspects of your toxicity, and when I do the xenobiotic tolerance test, which indicates how well you can tolerate environmental toxin to which you are exposed, you can see how different you are when you are in natural environments versus in toxic environments. And therefore your diet will never be the same. But most of you followers of the gurus live in toxic polluted cities, aren't you? Therefore, your diet cannot be the same as somebody who moved to Costa Rica and lives on a farm in the tropics and eat tropical fruits and other things all day long. You can't. Plus, many of them are completely adverse against any supplements. And I've seen so many of them who came to my clinic already three or four years into the diet that they chose and they have such a severe deficiency that they already have tingling and numbness, paresthesias, in the periphery at the edges of their limbs, which indicate that they already have neurological damage. And they have brain fog, a lack of concentration, and if they did it longer, they start having dementia. Dementia. That's a problem when you tell people that they all have to eat the same way. If you live in the tropics, great, enjoy 80-10-10. But even in nature, you would have a hard time sticking with 80-10-10, even in the pristine paradise. Because look at young coconuts and how much fat there is there. Look at durians. 
look at jackfruits, look at avocados. It's not that easy to eat a small amount of fat all the time. Maybe sometime you ingest a bolus of fat, a big amount all at once. If that were not the case, how come you have gallbladders? Have you ever thought about that? Why do you have gallbladders? To secrete a large amount of bile all at once so that you can emulsify a large amount of fat all at once. Nature is telling us that we would be exposed to a big amount of fat sometime, or else we wouldn't have had this gallbladder. Does that make sense? It's basic physiology. Other thing that people are telling us are man-made ideas. Anybody who tells you, here is the rule, 80-10-10, 30-40-40, it's just man-made rules. In nature, there are no such rules. Sometimes you will have more fat, sometimes you will have less fat, sometimes you will have more carbs, sometimes less carbs. The one thing you will never have a lot of in nature is protein. On that, everybody who studied the science will agree. 10% or less, that's the way to go. If you have more than 10% of your diet coming from protein, in fact even more than 8%, you already are poisoning yourself. That's why you should stay away from all the high protein bars, high protein powders, high protein junk, high protein whey. Anybody who tells you, buy me, buy me, I'm high in protein. You should pay attention, heed that warning, and stay away from that high protein. So that we agree on. However, we have all those diets like Atkins and the Zone. The Zone diet tells to have 30% of your calories coming from protein. Atkins, the same way, more or less, and all those other diets that are following that pattern. All of them will poison you with their excess protein. I have a two hour double CD on protein. Plus there's a free lecture online which I've given in the San Francisco World Vegetarian Festival about protein. If you just Google uh, my name or Google uh, uh, YouTube, in YouTube about the, that specific event, you'll see a whole hour lecture on protein where, where I explain things that are not in the double CD, just taking it a step further. So, um, diets that tell you to have more protein may temporarily change your metabolism. Like the Atkins diet makes you ketotic. When you have ketosis, it's when you burn fat for energy because you don't have carbs. Carbs are the cleanest energy makers. Fats are semi-clean. But the body prefers to convert carbs into energy. So if you avoid all carbs and give people lots of protein, the body will have no choice but to start burning fat. So you end up with ketosis, ketone bodies all over your system and we can measure that in the urine. That is poisoning yourself just like having advanced type 1 diabetes or just like having starvation. That is not a healthy state for lengthy amount of time. That's why people fail. But if you look at a diet just from the perspective of diet or, or weight loss, they've done a study in Tuft University comparing the Atkins diet or Zone diet, which are similar enough, with Weight Watchers and with Dean Ornish diet. Dean Ornish is strictly vegan, very low fat. They compared all three diets and they found out that after a year, they all lost exactly the same amount of weight. So there was no advantage to one over the other in terms of weight loss. But we care about health, not just weight loss. We want people to lose weight the healthy way. Not to care so much about the pounds, but to care more about the physiology and to avoid chronic disease. You do the diet that tell you to eat high protein and you end up with chronic disease because you are continuously poisoning yourself changing your metabolism, disturbing your uh, immune system, your hormonal system and balance, 
and even your digestive system. Too much protein is the biggest mistake that Western civilization is engaging right now.